We are sailing Philadelphia, a world away from the coldly time. Sailing to Philadelphia to draw the line. Just in time for the rain, yeah. I would like to welcome you all to Mason Dixon Historical Park. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to make this real quick. Um, Kevin Hamrick is going to, to kick this off with a little song, Country Roads, for us. Um, thank you to all of our elected officials who came here today, helped make this project and this weekend possible. Um, it, Kevin, after you. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Lewis Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees, younger than the mountain, growing like trees. Country road, take me home to the bay. I belong. West Virginia, Mount Mamo, take me home, the country road. All my memories gather round her, minor lady, stranger to blue water. Dark and dusty, painted on the sky, misty taste of moon. Teardrop in my country road Take me home to the place I belong West Virginia Mountain Mama Take me home the country road I hear her voice in the morning hour. She calls me Radio reminds me of my home far away Driving down a road I get the feeling that I should have been home yesterday Yesterday Country road Take me home To the place I belong West Virginia Mountain Mama Take me home, them country roads. You take me home, them country roads. You take me home, them country roads. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. You're beautiful. Kevin, thank you for making it stop and raining with that song. We really appreciate that. It works every time. I want to thank you all again. I think you all know how important this is. Uh, a 250th anniversary doesn't happen very often. You know, it won't happen again in our lifetime here at this park. Um, right now, I'd like to introduce a, uh, a man who is the driving force behind this. I think most of us know Pete. Mr. Pete Zapaka. He is the president of our festival board, and he is going to take it from here. Pete, let's give it up for Pete. Thank you, JR. There we go. Thank you very much. And I, actually, I should stand a little over here if you don't mind, since I'm indigenous here, and even though I live in West Virginia. Thank you all for coming and standing out in the rain. Uh, I'm kind of flying by my pants here, and we're going to have a good time just over the next half hour or so. Um, we have, we have um, some entertainment. We have a lot of history. We're going to tell you about this. Um, a little item in the middle of something that's never been here before. Never been here before, so we're going to tell you about that. So, again, welcome, and I really appreciate our elected officials being here. Thank you. It's important that you two know the importance of this history that's right on your border. So, thank you very much. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start our little tributes here, and, um, and I want to thank these ladies and gentlemen here. The Clay Battelle Concert Choir. What's beautiful about their high school is it's in West Virginia. They look out the back window and they can see the Mason-Dixon line. So I'm going to turn things over to Miss Cassandra Nelson. 
and all her lovely students. So thank you guys. It was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, students, so much. Really appreciate it. I'm going to uh, use my phone to fumble around here to uh, make sure that I don't leave anybody out. So if you don't mind, bear with me. Um, there we go. I'd like to introduce you to a lady who um, I absolutely could not have uh, organized this with. Um, it, it was, of course, my idea, but she shoved me along, and I'd like to present to you, and where the heck she is, I don't know, I don't see her, but oh, there she is, but I'd like to introduce you to my, my beautiful wife, Amy Johns, who's going to read something for us. This is an excerpt from the Monongahela of Old by James Veach, the southern boundary of Pennsylvania. Here, Pennsylvania. The southern boundary of Pennsylvania exhibits several striking peculiarities. Its eastern end consists of a considerable arc of a circle, which, springing from the river Delaware, connects itself with the latitudinal part of the line by a deep, sharp indentation or notch, so as to resemble what in architecture is called a bead. From the initial point of the latitudinal line near the circle, it stretches away to the west through field and forest, intent only upon preserving its course without being deflected by either the channel of a river or the crest of a mountain. Climbing obliquely the summit of the Alleghenies, it turns its back upon the fountains which feed the Atlantic and, rushing down into the Ohio Valley, stoops in its pathway to drink of the crystal waters of the Yakagani. Rising refreshed, and with its eyes still fixed to the west, it hurries on, regardless of the intersecting line of a sister sovereignty, and, stalking across the Cheat and the Monongahela, stops amid the Fish Creek Hills, within half a day's journey of the River Ohio, as if exhausted by the rugged route it has traversed, and unable to reach that great natural boundary, recognized by every other state than Pennsylvania, which, it current, which its current laves. Thank you very much, Amy. 
of course, one of the reasons, that the, the main reason that we asked that reading to be read was because the southern border of Pennsylvania effectively is the Mason-Dixon line. There's another part to it, but since we're out here, let's deal with Pennsylvania and West Virginia today. Uh, and West Virginia, you know that your northern border is the Mason-Dixon line. So um, this is it here. You folks are in West Virginia, you folks are in Pennsylvania, and if you'd like to be with me someday, I want you to just cross the line with me. That's what I always told Amy, I want to cross the line with her. So. All right, we have some special guests here today, but unfortunately we have special guests who could not be here for health reasons. And I've asked them to allow us to uh, to uh, have their voices heard. And they've, they've sent two statements that Amy will give a read to, and she'll tell you about who they are right now. So, thank you. This is from George W. Dixon, Jeremiah's great times five nephew. As you remember how Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon completed the survey of the line that bears their names, you can marvel at their success. It was achieved with great professional skill and determination. They were faced with extreme weather conditions and sometimes dangerous and potential life-threatening situations. When I came to the annual Mason-Dixon Festival in Morgantown in 1995, I climbed Browns Hill and met Todd Babcock, Wayne Twigg, and Richard Castile. To my knowledge, I was the first of Jeremiah's family descendants to visit there at the end of their line. I have spent over 50 years researching their story. They truly were a remarkable duo. They had relatively humble beginnings, but pursued their individual skills with great and enthusiastic determination. I regret that I can't be with you to share these celebrations. Both Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon fully deserve the admiration that you are bestowing. Their achievement has left a legacy for the subsequent evolution and development of your country. It was well deserved in 2013 that both were recognized in Cockfield, UK for Jeremiah Dixon and in Philadelphia, USA for Charles Mason for their success and contribution to the history of the United States. In sending you my greetings, I wish you all a happy and successful time as you remember these two special men. I also congratulate and salute Todd Babcock and his colleagues for their dedication and contribution in their desire to recognize and preserve the achievements of Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon. With very best wishes, George W. Dixon. And this is from Ed Danson, and Pete is always saying this is the gentleman who wrote the definitive book called Drawing the Line. Hello and greetings from England. I wish I could be there with you all today, sharing in the fun and retracing some of Mason and Dixon's steps during those last days on their line. If there was one celebration I was determined to make it, it was this one. But alas, the fates conspired against me, so I'm stuck here in the UK while some old friends are having fun over there. But I'm there with you in spirit. Charles Mason, Jeremiah Dixon, and their famous line have been a part of my life for the last 20 years. And today you're celebrating their great achievement, something never before attempted, a feat many said was impossible. Mason and Dixon may have been the brains behind the scheme, but they could never have run the line without a first-rate support team, many of whom were themselves land surveyors. Joel Bailey, their right-hand man, and an accomplished astronomer. The indefatigable Jonathan Cope and William Derby, Moses Barnes, Robert Boggs, Henry Maytier, the McLean family, Archibald, Moses, James, and Samuel, John Hannings, John Harlan, Matthew Marine, Robert Farlow, Thomas Hickman, John Hannings, Christopher Meyer, Robert Nelson, and not forgetting Captain Hugh Crawford from the Office of Indian Affairs and the Native American deputies who accompanied the team on their last and most dangerous section of the line to this very spot. The Mason-Dixon line wasn't their first project, nor was it their last, but it was their most famous. So many thanks and congratulations to Pete Zapatka and all the team who have worked so hard to put this 250th Mason-Dixon celebration together. It's utterly brilliant. Have a great day with warmest regards to you all, Ed Danson. I wish I could have read this with an, in, uh, with an English accent. <laughs> well, at least you spoke English. So, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to bring Kevin uh, Hamrick back on to sing for us what we uh, most of us consider to be the uh, the anthem of the Mason-Dixon line. So 
Please join us again in welcoming Kevin Hamrick. From birth, make my mark upon this earth. You call me Charlie Mason, stargazer am I. It seems that I was born to chart the evening sky. They cut me out for bacon bread, but I had other dreams instead. The baker's boy from West Country. Join the Royal Society. We are sailing Philadelphia, world away from the coldly time. Sailing to Philadelphia to draw the line. Mason Dixon Line. Dixon, but I swear you'll make me mad. The West will kill us both, you gullible Geordie lad. You talk of liberty, and how can America be free? Geordie and a baker's boy, and the fourth star of the Iroquois. Hold your head up, Mason, see America lies there. The morning tides are raised, the capes of Delaware. Come up and feel the sun, a new morning has begun. One more day we'll make it clear, why your stars should guide us here. We are sailing Philadelphia. A world away from the coldly time Sailing to Philadelphia To draw the line We are sailing Philadelphia A world away from the coldly time Sailing to Philadelphia To draw the line Mason Dixon Line Mason Dixon Line The Mason Dixon Line Thanks again, Kevin. I appreciate it very, very much. That song means a, a lot to a lot of us, and, and uh, uh, really appreciate it having it here, as it was sung in 2013 at Christ Church in Philadelphia, where we celebrated the 250th anniversary over there. So we have some very special guests with, uh, with us. We've already heard Amy bring a lot of the voice, uh, voices of people who cannot be here. We have some very, very special guests who are here to illustrate to you how significant this event is the 250th anniversary of the Mason Dixon line. May I first present to you uh, a gentleman I've known for a week now, and, um, and he's rapidly becoming a dear friend, and, and I, I will always stay in touch with him. Um, this gentleman is uh, Jeremiah Dixon's five time grand nephew, Mr. John Dixon. And along with John is, is, a, is a young lady who I've come to know, and uh, um, I swear every time that I see her, she's smiling, so she must be a very happy lady. This is John's daughter, Melissa Dixon. And Janet, where are you? Can you make yourself a little more visible here, because I couldn't see you. Jeremiah Dixon never married, but... Um, we have uh, been blessed with finding this lady and her daughters who are with us today. Um, Jeremiah Dixon never married, but... Um, as, as the song said that, uh, that he was a ladies man um, and he did um, have a very special lady in his life named Margaret Bland. 
So I would like to introduce to you some people who are direct descendants of Jeremiah Dixon and Margaret Bland, and they come to us, are you ready for this, from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So, Janet Helgeson and jo Joy and Jackie, right? Welcome. Welcome. We are very, very happy to have you here. So, thank you for being with us. So, we have some very special uh, elected officials here with us, and I just want to go down back to my phone here so I don't miss anybody, because if you know me, um, as time goes on, it happens now that I'm 64. Um, first of all, with us is uh, West Virginia State Delegate Barbara Evans Fleischauer. Barbara, there you are over there. And State Represent Pennsylvania State Representative. Representative Pam Snyder had to go back to Harrisburg, so um, uh, her uh, chief of staff, Nate Rigotti, is here with us. Nate, so. you can tell Pam I miss her, but I understand. Um, over here is Montagilly County, West Virginia, and we're blessed with three very good county commissioners here, and one whom uh, I always kid that, that he's like Mason and Dixon. He started in Philadelphia and came here. First of all, Commissioner Tom Bloom. And Commissioner Ed Hawkins. And a gentleman I'm getting to see more and more, he's back there, Commissioner Sean Sakura. So thank you for coming. And here in Greene County, Pennsylvania, let me step back over here. A day over you alone? Okay, all right. And uh, a gentleman I've come to know over the years, Greene County Commissioner Dave Coder. Other commissioners are Blair Zimmerman and Archie Trader. So I would like to start off. I understand you have some proclamations and uh, talks to give, and I would like Barbara, since you were, uh, where, where did you go? You're the highest ranking official here from the state of West Virginia. And Barbara, I think that it's appropriate that you would stand on the West Virginia side of the line here. So. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Well, I bring um, greetings both from the governor and from the legislature. And you want me to do them both right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, first, I think we should do, yeah. Yes. Um, go. Okay, um, I am just going to read uh, the, uh, the resolution part. Um, this is a proclamation by Governor Jim Justice, um, and he's, um, it goes through the history, um, establishing the line and the surveyors and so on, and then it says, now therefore be it resolved that I, Jim Justice, Governor of the great state of West Virginia, do hereby proclaim October 15th, 2000, 2017 as Mason Dixon Day in the Mountain State and encourage all citizens to join me in recognizing this great achievement and the famous boundary line that was established. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the state of West Virginia to be affixed. Done at the Capitol, city of Charleston, state of West Virginia, this, the 25th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2017, and in the 155th year of the state, Jim Justice Governor. Okay, this one is from the West Virginia Legislature, and I have included most of the le most of the legislators who um, live on the border lines are included here. Um, this citation was presented by me, Delegate Barbara Evans Fleischer, Del Delegate Dave Pethel, who lives in um, Wetzel County, Delegate John Williams, Delegate Rodney Pyle, Senator Bob Beach, who was born in this area. Delegate Cindy Fritch, Delegate Terry Seipold, um, and her husband, Senator Dave Seipold. They're both from um, Preston County. And then Delegate Joe Statler. So all of us are very thrilled 
to be associated with this um, wonderful celebration. It is just amazing. So um, I'm going to read the last whereas. Whereas this 250th celebration of the Mason-Dixon survey is intended to be a reminder of that historic journey as well as an inspiration to children and young at heart adults who love history, math, and science and the great outdoors. Therefore, on the 15th day of October 2017, we do here, Bryce, celebrate the achievements of the Mason-Dixon team and aspire to achieve a renewal of the spirit of learning, exploration, and discovery that they demonstrated. Um, so this citation was presented by me. <laughs> Thank you so very much. I really, uh, you know, I, I tend to get weepy at times, so if I do kind of well up, I mean, this, this is a, a very big event for us, and, and that was just a very, very, very big thing. So um, let's, let's cross the line right now, so as I always like to do. And uh, Nate, um, I understand you have something for us from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So I will turn this over to you. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank you. Hi, folks. Again, my name is Nate. On behalf of State Representative Pam Snyder over in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, thank you, Pete, and thank you all for coming out to celebrate uh, this momentous occasion. What an achievement it was to put this whole thing together. I think originally Pennsylvania thought that we had Morgantown um, until these guys uh, came along. So I'm not sure if I really like them because I think Commonwealth of Pennsylvania could use a place like Morgantown. Um, I do want to uh, thank the county commissioners from Monongalia County. This is a beautiful county park, first time that I've been here. Uh, and this, this is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, area. So um, I do have a citation here from the House of Representatives in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, we're extremely proud to have a portion of the Mason-Dixon line run across our district in the 50th district um, up here in Greene County. Um, it's not complete yet because it hasn't passed the House of Representatives, but there is a resolution being put together by all of the representatives um, along the Mason-Dixon line throughout Pennsylvania. It's being uh, head up by Kristen Phillips Hill, who's a representative out from um, York County uh, in Pennsylvania and, and Representative Snyder, and we've included everybody along uh, the Pennsylvania line. So they're going to be passing that resolution um, in the House of Representatives probably this week, maybe next week, and we'll get a copy of that for you, Pete, to have. But I do have this citation here signed by Representative Snyder, just a brief sentence out of it. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania salutes the Mason-Dixon Historical Park as it celebrates this momentous occasion and offers best wishes for continued growth and success in the years to come. And a copy of this uh, given to the Mason-Dixon Historical Park, signed by Representative Pam Schneider and Speaker of the House, Mike Terzai. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Nate. Oh, I turn it off. That's okay. Thank you so much, Nate. Appreciate that very much. Now we're going to cross the line again. And, um, <laughs> The Monongalia County Commissioners I've come to know and res respect greatly, um, and uh, since I now live in West Virginia, I, I follow what they do, and I'm, I'm very happy to have them here with us, uh, but I don't know yet uh, which among you will be the spokesman here. So, um, Ed? Okay. Would you like to all, all, why don't you come on, all come on up and... <laughs> And go ahead and uh, just reintroduce yourselves and, and thank you. Hi, uh, my name's Ed Hawkins. So we have Tom Bloom and Sean Sakura. Uh, we comprise the Montgomery County Commission. I will read the same the last part, uh, but I would like to say I'm always impressed that somebody got to have something named for them for 250 years and didn't have to leave a plaque for it. So uh, that impresses me greatly. Thank you. Whereas the state of West Virginia was born in 1863 and the Mason-Dixon line is this herald of state northern border, therefore we, the members of the Montague County Commission, by virtue of the authority vested in us, do hereby proclaim October 15, 2017 as Mason-Dixon Day in the Mountain State and encourage all citizens to join us in recognizing this great achievement and the famous boundary line that was established. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ed, Sean, and Tom. Tom, can I, can I torture you for a minute? Because I, you know, I, I like to point this guy out because I always tell him he's like Mason and Dixon. You've got to put him on the other end of the line. Yeah, yeah you got to put we, him on the other end We the could line. do that. Uh, Mr. Tom Bloom uh, came to us from Philadelphia like Mason and Dixon, and now he's out here like Mason and Dixon. So, Tom, thank you for being special in, in this regard. I appreciate I, it. I think it's really great being from the Philadelphia, which is such a historical area, and now coming and being able to represent where the stone is now in Montague County. It's just it's very important. I can't wait to send this back to Philadelphia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, I want to cross the line here and introduce Green County Commissioner Dave Coder, please. Thank you, Pete. It's just such a pleasure to be here today. But you know, when you uh, when Kevin was singing, it, I just couldn't help myself. You know, uh, I was going to say, Pete. Now, here's the line, okay? And I was watching. I was listening to those lyrics pretty uh, intently. And if that's almost heaven, yeah. what's this side? Just, just have to say that. <laughs> It was a political uh, dream <laughs> to do this. On behalf of the Green County Board of Commissioners, our Chairman Blair Zimmerman, Archie Trader, and myself, it's truly a pleasure to be here today. I'd like to point out, my, I brought my mother with me. She's in the back, uh, on the bench back there. And my father was a very, uh, very um, into history, and he would have loved to have been here today. I just uh, think of him today and uh, just... Um, gives me good memories but uh, I look at everybody here today what a great turnout uh, like I said on behalf of the Green County Commission I have a proclamation and they asked if I was going to read it and I looked at it and I had the good fortune of having cataract surgery about four weeks ago with Dr. Heath Lemley a guy for a doctor from Mount Morris and he did a great job but he's not giving me the new glasses till tomorrow so <laughs> I can't read it too if I tried so on behalf of the commissioners, I'd like to uh, give you this proclamation on behalf of us. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. It means a lot. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Um, before we move on, I just want to embarrass one more um, gentleman who's become a good friend, um, who um, has just been the driving force behind this, uh, makes this park as beautiful as it is, just works, and too bad. But uh, <laughs> doesn't like accolades, but my dear friend, Park Superintendent J.R. Petsko, let's give it up for him. I, I swear I've seen this man working 26 hours a day. Absolutely swear. Now, as I always tell people when we, when we do things like this, this is not the Pete show. You know, I'm just kind of like the spokesman. Maybe it was my idea or whatnot. But, the people who actually did this are some of the best surveyors I have ever been around. Uh, dear friends now, we've started a journey that while Mason and Dixon uh, went 250 years, we've been together less time, but um, my, the things we've seen and done and planned. Um, first of all, I'd like to recognize Mr. Don Teeter, who's one of our surveyors. And did we lose Bob somewhere? Is he Bob? Where are you? Up. Oh, you kind of Bob Andreato, please. And, and finally, um, you know, a guy who I've, I've really, uh, um, really learned to listen to a lot because he knows what he's talking about. He'll probably tell you differently as he looks behind him. But Mr. Rick Castile. And. And I'd like to have Rick, who's, who doesn't like to speak, but I'm going to make him speak, to tell us what the heck is this. So, Rick. All right, so I met Pete 2013. We were out here on a fall walk, and uh, as we walked along the path, he would stop every once in a while, and he goes, all right, folks, what state are we in? Nobody knew. We'd walk a little farther. He'd say, okay, state, guys. What state are we in? And nobody knew. Well, Pete had an idea that it was somewhere in this area, but he really didn't know where he was, and still doesn't. Uh, 
As we uh, walked, we talked about the um, event that was held in Philadelphia by the Cerberus Historic Society where they had placed a stone for Charles Mason um, in the Christ burial ground and also a spike that they had set at the first observation point. And he said, man, it would really be cool to do something like that in this, in this event at the end of the Mason-Dixon. And I kind of cataloged that back in the back of my mind and we walked on. Uh, on the way out, we stopped at the path which goes to the top of the hill and Pete addressed the crowd and said, okay guys, some of us want to get to the top of the hill, you're welcome to follow along. Um, many people followed us, but there were many who just, they just couldn't. It's just physically impossible for them to get to the top of the hill. And one misnomer I want to uh, dispel right now is this is not a stone that Charles and Mason set. The last point that they set is up on top of Brown's Hill. And that's a pretty, pretty tough journey to get up there. Um, doing some research on Mason and Dixon, um, whenever you Google anything, you get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, hits. And of course, images come up, and me being a picture guy, I like looking at pictures. I started looking through the pictures and saw many different uh, pictures of uh, Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam, you know, throwing things at each other across the line. Um, and also there was some pictures of a beautiful uh, white limestone crossings on pathways along the line over to the east. And I thought, you know, it would be nice to put something on our pathway down here. And that would uh, give us uh, a, a good division point between West Virginia. I'm a West Virginia boy. <laughs> that would give us a good division point between West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Uh, there was some talk later on that this uh, pathway would probably be upgraded, and, and it was. Uh, so with a little bit of help with uh, Bob Andriotti, our Monongahela County surveyor, and of course, J.R. Petska, uh, we got together and decided that putting it in that pathway probably wasn't a good idea if we wanted it to last any time. Uh, we put our heads together and decided we'd make a feature of some sort east of the path, turn it into a recreation area, a destination area for the park. Um, so that's what we had kind of settled on doing. I really didn't know what we wanted to do at the time, but we had a week to think about it. So we thought we probably ought to come up with a, with a concept. And somehow on the way home, I thought, we've got to put something to do with surveying in this feature. Um, we had our material already. We had these nice foundation stones made out of sandstone, which is indigenous to our area. The red bricks represent probably 80% of the old uh, roadways in any of the towns in our area. So brick and stone it was. And now we had to figure out what we were going to do with our feature. Um, Something hit me on the back of the head and it come to me that, hey, let's go ahead and make this feature 16 and a half feet from this end to that end. 16 and a half feet is the length of a rod or a pole or a perch, to, depending on where you're from. So that was what we decided to do. We'd make this a survey measurement length of 16 and a half feet, one rod. And that just wasn't quite good enough. So we decided that we would set a couple stones one here and one over at the sign at the pathway. And those stones are 66 feet apart. And 66 feet is the length of a chain. And if you were to look at Charles Mason's journal, you would see the notations for a rod or a pole and chains throughout the whole document. So we decided we would add this feature to the park with some of the survey links. And somewhere along the way, we were given a great gift. This uh, center stone here is an original crown stone, which was quarried in England back in 1760s, loaded onto a ship, brought over to Philadelphia, unloaded, and uh, by horse and wagon brought to a point just about 100 and 120 miles to the east of here. Uh, during a remonumentation of a point, when they were digging for the foundation, Chaz Langland and Todd Babcock from the uh, Mason-Dixon Line Preservation Partnership happened to unearth this exactly at the point that they thought it should be. So Mason and Dixon not only did a good job, but these gentlemen did a good job in retracing their footsteps. And that's what we as surveyors aspire to do is retrace the footsteps of those who came before us. 
So we had this lovely stone that we needed to do something with. Uh, Todd, Chaz, let us have it to uh, to do something with on the feature if we thought we could, if we could find a place for it. And of course, we made it the very center of our feature. From that stone to the stones on either end is 33 feet, which makes our full length of 66. And it's, uh, what would it be, eight and a quarter feet from the center of the stone to each end of the feature itself. Um, now this was done by the West Virginia affiliation of the Cerberus Historic Society, which I'm the president of and have been railroaded into every year for the last 17 years, I believe. Um, but hey, somebody's got to do it. I'm also past president of the West Virginia Society of uh, Professional Surveyors. And through their help and cooperation, and especially the local chapter of the uh, society, the Mountain Region chapter, who without their help, in manpower, I don't think this feature could have could have taken place. Uh, thank yes, thank you very much, guys. And in this journey, I've got to know Pete Jr. over here pretty well. We've we've uh, I don't know. I think he and I and Bob were dating there for a while. <laughs> Seemed like every week or twice a week or every other week we were getting together out here on the line and trying to find out something else we could do. We added a few benches here and there. This area used to look much like the uh, brush across the pathway. We cleared a lot of the brush out. JR did quite a bit of that before we got here, but we uh, also cleared quite a bit as well. But anyway, we are happy to present this as a tribute to Mason and Dixon for the work they had done. And we hope that uh, the surveyors that follow us will appreciate their work as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Very much appreciated. The work that these gentlemen done is just, well, simply astronomical, and that's why I like it, because Mason Dixon used astronomy to draw the line. Uh, that's one of my one of my passions if you know me I love astronomy um, gotta say a couple words about two other gentlemen one of whom is here and up oh, there he is back there um, uh, Rick mentioned one Chaz Langland who um, could not be here today but Chaz is actually the the gentleman who brought this stone all the way from Maryland out here and I wanted to salute him briefly and Rick also mentioned Another gentleman, and Todd Babcock, and Todd, where did you get to? Um, and Todd is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that gentleman is Mr. Mason Dixon Line. He's inspired me in so many ways. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much. But in, in closing up shop here, and before I let you go, I want to get, uh, as, as, as I usually do, get giddy about things, and dang. This is the 250th anniversary of the Mason-Dixon line, and we're on it. I love it. I love it. If you imagine what happened where you're standing 250 years ago, this is where you are. I just get absolutely giddy over this, and I hope when you go home, you take some of that with you to understand the historical significance of this line that was woven into the fabric of America. As you know, it was a hundred years, a century before the Civil War. So when you think of the Mason-Dixon line from henceforth, please think in terms of Mason and Dixon, who drew a line that did not divide, it drew a fledgling nation together. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's to 250 years Thank you, Charles and Jeremiah, and thank you, everybody, very, very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Yeah. Mr. Dixon. John? Some people over here want to hear from you. Would you like to say a couple words before we let everybody go? Yeah. So? Not that we haven't made you talk enough so far. So. John? Thank you, Pete. Uh, 
was quite uh, not quite expecting this actually, and uh, to address you good folks for one last time, but simply to uh, cast my mind back to Cockfield in England, and to think that a simple boy there, young man, came all this way 250 years ago. It's a bit of a strain on a plane these days, but to come across, <laughs> taking him months to finish up somewhere like this, so far from home, and to achieve so much, I'm, I'm so proud to be connected to it and, uh, and to share it with you good folks. And I've had, my daughter and I have had such a, a wonderful time here, and I can't begin to thank you. How friendly <laughs> you made us feel. It's quite moving, it's quite moving. I really can't say any more, Pete. <laughs> uh, I really have enjoyed it so much. We have, and uh, thank you everybody for welcoming us so much. We'll come back again sometime. And finally, since we, we gave the, John the opportunity to stop, talk, I, Janice, I don't know if you'd like to say a couple words, but we'd sure like to hear one or two from you if you don't mind. Oh, that's okay. You're among friends. Janet Helgeson, please. And how about we get you to stand right on the line here? So why don't you come over here just a little bit? There you go. In the pole. Or you can stand up there. I just want to thank everybody for preserving the history, for inviting me here. I have never felt so welcome anywhere. And if you think he cheers up, I just, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the one last thing I'll say is that um, if you would like to hike to the top of Browns Hill, this is your opportunity. Um, you're on your own, but unless some of the surveyors want to go. <laughs> um, there is a marker set on the top of Browns Hill that it was, what, it's 21 chains from the stone over there? Is that right? Yeah. And um, the stone that's set on top of Browns Hill is set on the exact spot Mason Dixon set their last marker 250 years ago. This stone and any stone you see on the West Virginia, Pennsylvania border is from the 1883 survey done by Cephas H. Sinclair. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I've got to, I've got to give it up before I start to cry too. Oh. And, and we found a battery pack for someone's Canon camera. So if you've lost this, please check it out with us. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you in 250 years. Now you're a good 
survey your Dixon, but I swear you make me mad. The West will kill us both, you gullible Jody lad. You talk of liberty, how can America be free? A Jordy and the Baker's boy in the forests of the Iroquois. Now hold your head up, Mason, see America lies there. Morning tide has raised the capes of Delaware. Come up and feel the sun. Check out the deer. Yeah. 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 That's going to be a test for these shoes. <laughs> Check out the back. I told people a few years ago in Philadelphia when we got the stone there. I went to South Carolina in Philadelphia and my, my feet were hurting. And the next day we were riding a bus to one of our events. We went to all that. And my friend Kim Bakite, who surveys in Florida, gave me the woman's perspective. She said, Don, the pretty shoes always make your feet hurt. <laughs> And generally, every time I tell a woman that, they all go, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Join your mom. Okay, this is it. Here's your... Okay, go ahead. You're the, you're the pro. Here. Go right ahead. I'm finished. Oh, thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. So what's the combined mileage that you've traveled? We've traveled. 
3,124 and a half miles. Just give me the coordinates. You traveled 2,000 to get here, right? Something like that. Oh, I expect a little bit more. Almost 3,000 over here in this world. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just didn't really matter. Sorry, can I go and stay there? No matter what, uh, you know, you get you get the you get the allocates, uh, but then you get the other. I told her. You have to be able to. You have to be able to take it. That's why I would. That's why I personally would not get you out. But I did when I would see somebody. A lot of people from Ontario go to Florida. People from Alberta go to Florida. Exactly. You don't have to go clear to Florida. Yeah, that's the time down. Yeah, where we're at, we don't get too bad. We get some winter, but so yeah, this is very hot. Trying to get a picture. Absolutely, yes. That's perfect. Right, okay. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. you. Thank you. No, not tomorrow. We have a day off tomorrow. Do you? Yeah. I mean, are we, are we talking university really? Right? No, we just high school. Yeah. High school. Do you have a good day off tomorrow? Yep. Why is it? Uh, our teachers, every now and then, uh, the Board of Education, they give the teachers, the kids a day off. Okay, yes. Oh, you want to hear me? If you ever back here and need another tour, let me know. We'll come up with you. Yes. And you guess my favorite ones. Yeah. <laughs> it took me probably an hour to get to the top of the hill. You give us a little time to talk. Yeah. <laughs> There's no hurry. Check out the deer. Let's go. Let's go be a check. Back. I told people a few years ago in Philadelphia when we got the stone there, I went out to Philadelphia and my feet were hurting and the next day we were riding a bus to one of our events and did all that and my friend Kim Bakite who surveys in Florida gave me the woman's perspective. She said, Don, the pretty shoes always make your feet hurt. <laughs> and generally every time I tell a woman that they all go, yeah, that's right. It's from John. Could you join, join your mom? Okay, this is it. Here's your Okay, go ahead. You're you're the pro. I'm go right ahead. I'm finished. Oh, thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate. So, what's the combined mileage that you've traveled? We've traveled. <laughs> 3,124 and a half miles. Just give me the coordinates. That's a rough guess. You've traveled 2,000 to get here, right? Something like that. Oh, I expect a little bit more. Almost 3,000 over here in this world. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just didn't really matter. Sorry, can I go and stay there? Could you take a picture?